Docking request accepted. Good morning, New Eden. Today is October 6, 2024, and to, and today we are, uh, we're, I'm, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I've been doing so many interviews right now, my brain is just uh, kind of shut down. But I'm Frozen Fallout, I'm your host here, somehow I'm going to, to make it through here. And, oh, you know what, god damn it, and this is one of the things that I fucked up. I needed to change out uh, the um, name here at the bottom. So Millet Arc Trooper <laughs> is with us, not Drake. Drake was already on the show. What a start! Perfect. And I, can, I this, can impersonate him. I can impersonate him. <laughs> you're, you, uh, you can see how professional that we are here. You know, very professional. We really think about make sure everything is perfect before we start here but uh millet tell me uh how did how did you get into eve online and uh you know tell tell us what what, what are you passionate about here well okay so when i came to eve online it was like august 2020 that was during the COVID era and at the moment i was trying to find something else to do you know because uh, i was working as an essential worker and i said you know what i'm gonna you know i looked at eve and i was like you know what maybe i should join this and Ironically, I actually wasn't exposed to Eve right then at 2020. Uh, back in like 2014, 2012, I saw a magazine. Uh, they used to have an Eve online magazine, and they had the interviews in it for Baltek, uh, the famous other fitting <laughs> guy who actually was famous for doing some really kind of crazy fits. Megatrons! And, uh, oh, yeah, I got to yeah, meet him and, at FanFest last year, and I was like so excited to meet him. He was so cool. That's actually that's actually part of the inspiration for some of the kind of the silliness that I'm known for with uh, the silly fits, and it was actually one of the things that kind of did that. And then what happened was in World War B, uh, two happened, and then Brisk Kraval kind of became the fitting Godfather, because he actually asked me to fit because they were doing a meme fleet uh, against Pappy, and so GSF was wanting to get a weird fitted industrial that they could use and all that. So it was, that's how the genesis of Millet Arc Trooper happened in the game. You and, and, and you have built up a reputation for yourself quite well. Um, tell us, uh, you know, what what gets you into wanting to be part of the CSM? Well, for me, my thought process was I want to be part of the CSM because I think many times the groups tend to overfocus on certain details. And it ends up with content being either completely smashed or ideas that could have been worked with and probably let, let looked at get destroyed too quickly because the CSM focuses too much on uh, in the moment. Uh, as I usually say, sometimes CSM is PvP in suits, uh, but not all the time. But I wanted to see you know where I could say, hey, look, let's try some different ideas. Let's try a little bit more careful balancing concept. Uh, what's the problem? Like <laughs> Gideon Zendikar uh, last year was harping up and down about rapid light ships. And I remember, you know, in one of the other streams that I ended up interviewing in was the Germans. And the Germans actually, I actually asked him a very pointed question. I asked, which problem are you having? Is it the missile itself? Is it the launcher? Or is it the ship hull? Because one of those three will affect how the missile performs. And one of the problems is he's more of a frigate player and he likes to fly retributions and retributions are very very small when you're fully skilled up so missiles uh, apply particularly light missiles apply very well but also rapid light ships already have a lot of nerf already for reload <laughs> so yeah i hate i hate one the, the reload on a, on, on a rapid reload i'm like <laughs> like oh man this, we're gonna be here for a while <laughs> Yeah, but there's but there is some ships. Here's the funny thing. Here's there's some ships still in the game that are actually accessible to some players. That if you get certain fits, you can get a reload bonus. So even even a badly reloaded rapid light 
can actually be buffed in a certain way to get certain advantages. It's not going to be effective at certain fits, you know, from resist and everything else, but if you wanted to get that option, you can. And it's a very interesting thing to do. I mean, I was actually playing with a Loki, and I realized recently I could put uh, rapid lights on a Loki. It was like 1.9 second. <laughs> I was like... That's solid. Like, eh, that's... that's... <laughs> That's a little broken. Whoop. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's different. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, so it's just how many times have you run uh, for CSM now? Uh, this is the second time. Uh, originally was last year. Um, I still put a lot of emphasis on the hauling, mining, and exploration community because those are the backbones of Eve. But I also have interest because I understand that if anything changes in one area, it also affects. Uh, negatively, you know, the, the PvP and faction warfare players. And so I usually try to advocate, hey, let's let's do a little more careful balancing concept. But the reason why I have been interested in the hauling community is because the hauling community carries everything around EVE. So if you want to build a ship, or you want to move a ship that you bought in Jita or some other market, you need to be able to move it. You need the logistics train. The problem is right now in EVE, the logistics train of EVE is really screwed up. Uh, M3 does not match the cargoes. We're having problems moving a lot of material. And it's we're kind of having clog ups all over. And then even some people have complained even in Nullsec about they can't move enough materials unless they want to risk a very, very large ship and then basically turning into a floating container. And that is a big frustration. Mining is pretty self-explanatory because of the mining and industrial changes post scarcity and there's still a lot of clog ups there particularly with the isogen because is well, always uh, a problem <laughs> yeah do you do you actually know what the the one of the biggest problems in that is with the isogen um i always thought it was like the the scarcity of being able to to, to even get to the item right like that it's really only a low sec accessible yeah that, at this point mm -hmm. Well, you can get it in wormhole space, but the problem is, is that kernite, well, certain particular, like kernite, om omber, the basic isogen ores, they have to be uncompressed because they are used for agents, uh, agents and uh, missions. Oh. So a lot of times it's like, yes, yeah, so that's one of the big, like, I mean, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, get reef guys, we have a problem because the compression system they don't have a compress, decompress like gas. Mining only compresses one way, and that's it. And so the amount of isogen is kind of bottlenecked because people who want to run, you know, level four missions have to have these resources. But those are the same resources that you have a lot of uh, things in. But then you also have content controls as well. So like you have certain areas like Poachman will have more isogen, but mining and poachman is a suicide run unless you're really good and green uh, but then you also have wormhole space you can get the items but wormhole anoms have been nerfed even from scarcity uh, when scarcity first happened i actually thought about like hey i'm gonna go into wormhole space and then they both they nerfed all the anoms it used to have you had more fight crokite all the major ores big stuff was in wormhole space and then they nerfed them uh, we had ideas like a they, you remember when the old sites, like if you would find a combat site, they CCP would cheaply use ores as the decorator of yeah, the site. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, when scarcity happened, people started realizing, hey, you can go into a relic site, data site, combat site, any of these sites, and get resources. And it was actually kind of interesting because, like, oh, we can shift people into this. So it meant that actually, if you dropped in and ratted, you could probably catch somebody, particularly in low sec. But for whatever reason, somebody told them get rid of everything and they weren't able to get all of it because there's still bugs in the system so there are still sites in the game and even missions that still have the old ores but it's because it's buried in the code interesting and it, exploration i think the only problem with exploration i'll say this very honestly is that exploration doesn't have a lot of options out, like every all all the puzzles have been pretty much solved except for some special event stuff so but my thought process is like 
why haven't we tried an escalation system or why haven't we tried some sort of like a pirate map it's like you get you pick up pieces and you build a map in order to find a new content item or um it is a big frustration in the game because a lot of people have actually want more unique materials i even told wormhole people it's like hey if we can make it where we have a site that you can go inside the wormhole and you it, you do certain things in the wormhole space and then suddenly it escalates so you're bouncing around your wormhole trying to complete this site to get the best resource or whatever thing that you need to do but when it happens you're actually making yourself a bigger target because you're trying to get everything done you know yeah, no, that sounds different. Sounds like a little bit of engagement, more, more engagement for sure. Um, and that that mm -hmm. kind of get, brings me though to uh, um, my my mind kind of goes to this idea of like, well, what do you think C CSM are capable of doing? What 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 is the role of CSM in this uh, this galaxy that we we inhabit? Well, the CSM I think is more of a communication of ideas of the more of the player base i'm supposed to represent everyone so even those that do not vote for me i have to still talk and actually ask questions to see if i can represent them i am basically for all intents and purposes a consultant on content and the materials so if they bring an idea to me and the problem is even though i have ideas i do know that they may have a different thing on their plate and maybe some of my ideas may get added later they may get added sooner we don't know but because I know like there's been players who made suggestions and then suddenly CCP has added the item in uh, the idea was ever put out. But yes, our role is more for representation and communication and, you know, at least giving feedback both first personally, but also as feedback from the player base with the NDA, you know, NDA withstanding. You know, because there will be some limitations of how much information can go back and forth absolutely but at least if we can try to get it where you if we can get a way to actually communicate more directly in so sorting and sifting so people can then communicate their ideas or concepts although personally a lot of it should be contained by the forums but i think a lot of people kind of get upset that the forum system kind of locks them out so within that kind of realm of uh, you know what you think that uh, CSM is capable of and what their role is in this uh, in this universe, how would you uh, present your information to CCP? Are you like a uh, spreadsheets in space kind of man that has all this like written down of you know you know focused down to the, the zero point zero 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 decimal point of uh, how this works? Um, do you have like are you trying to push for philosophical changes in the way that CCP thinks? How are you going to try and convince CCP to change their mindset to what you think would be healthy for you? I think the I think the concept is constructive criticism, where you're not being combative, but you bring an idea or a problem up and say, well, this is going on. How can we fix this? Or what do you think you could do to fix this? You know, put it in their ballpark. And then kind of ask the questions, you know, both the philosophical and this. The spreadsheet concept does work. Um, it is kind of interesting that you mentioned that because most people don't realize is that I don't really use PyFa as much for my fits. <laughs> really? So, I, 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 mean, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I, I would have never guessed. Well, because the way I do it is I like to be intuitive, so I like to look at something and figure out a possible problem. Um, so that's one of the ideas that sometimes an intuitive or counterintuitive thought process, if you look at something, will tell you if you check the item and you look at it and you just ask a couple questions, like if CCP brought, let's say, let's use the skyhooks thing. Okay, so what is, you know, you'd basically want to ask, okay, what's the role of this particular material? Is it replacing something that's already there? Um, from what I from what I've kind of understood that POCOs and which are the custom offices and the skyhooks kind of overlap but the skyhooks give access to much more important reagents of the materials um, which is a very interesting thing as well but it's like you would ask them okay what's what's the role of this item how does it work and is there you know and then ask them how they intend to make it work if they told you how or showed you how they were going to initially do it, 
then you would ask because your information your knowledge of what you're doing you then say okay you give them you don't try to go too much what if but you try to say okay what if we do this what if we do this and then ask the questions and then we can't a hundred percent you can't really nerf the player that's one of the problems you you can't predict the player and you can't nerf the player but you can create a playing ground on which everyone can play reasonably within the rules so if that were to come up and i was talking about the skyhooks what i would have done is i would have basically made the basically the owner gets much easier access to the skyhook okay he has much faster time to get in the attacker would probably have like maybe between the two the, the the owner has two minutes the attacker has five so the owner has time to, to defend but they would have a secure bay they would have the normal you know the normal surplus bay that they're talking about but i would get rid of the timer because people really want to have conflict you need to defend your space you don't need to be just sitting on it and and if you're willing to keep your skyhooks clean you're not going to lose much but if you're just going to let sit and grow and grow and grow you're going to be a bigger bigger target for somebody to steal stuff well that's and, one of the know, things that maybe... i i find really interesting in all of this this skyhook debate kind of thing is that mm. these are new items especially with what we were writing and i say we because i was one of the i loved loved robbing skyhooks mm -hmm. i think that was I was doing a major part of my gameplay. I was getting good at it. I had a lot of fun. Um, but the 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 thing about it though is that there's this whole like idea of like, well, oh, they're you're robbing and taking all this stuff. These are items that are brand new to the game that were not that are not. Mm -hmm. It's not like this is vital to the fucking economy, people. Like this is just a mm -hmm. massive amount, not not an isk sink or not an isk faucet because it's not generating isk, but it's generating a massive mm -hmm. amount of items that is helpful. And the most important thing that we sold was the the gas, the magnetic gas. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't give a fuck about the ice. The ice sucked. Fuck ice. It's we're we're going to steal the magnetic gas, and that's for the what the drills. You know what else is that yeah. used? And I haven't heard anybody talk about. And maybe I'm wrong. There might be other things that it's used in, but from my understanding, it's used in drills, like in, yes. in just having the passive income come back. So fuck you mm -hmm. with your whiny, cry, mm -hmm. bitchy, crying bitches. Like, okay, protect your ice, whatever, because we didn't give a fuck about it in the first place. But the the magnetic gas should be for us to come and raid. <laughs> and cause chaos and make you have to work for your shit. And the more spread out you get, the more you don't get your shit. Um, I'm really passionate about it. I am open to say that, you know, maybe I'm too passionate. Maybe I need to take a step back, realize that, you know, people needed to make their money off their thing. Everybody's getting robbed. Nobody made any money, which I'm saying bullshit to, but show me the stats, mm -hmm. show me the information, and maybe I'll yep. back down from my stance. But this is a brand new item that they in in introduced mm -hmm. into the economy to do something that is pa for passive income. That is almost a bullshittery on its own, but I like that it generates some weird fights. Like I've been hearing good things about the the drills, so I'm less like ah fuck the drills. I'm like no no no, just you know fuck you with your your belief that the that I just I should be able to make billions out of this one skyhook without you being mm -hmm. able to touch it. Is <laughs> what? No. Well, you gotta fight well, for that the, shit. Well, the major. Yeah, they do. They have to. But the, actually, the interesting thing is that the Skyhook system, from the way I remember reading it when it first came out, was that it was designed as a solve logistics system. So basically, in order to control your territory, you had to generate the reagents to then power various different components of your solve. Mm -hmm. So as people were stealing and breaking them down, the it meant that certain null groups and other groups could not power up and operate different things in their space. But once now, again, I'm going to go to yeah. ice on that, though. That ice was that yeah. was all about ice, right? And none of us who were really out there hunting truthfully gave mm -hmm. a fuck about ice. As far as I, and mm -hmm. my personal experience with it was to skip all ice planets and not give a fuck about them, get that magnetic gas. That's where it was at. Mm -hmm. 
Now the gas was interesting because you with these changes that they've changed, these nerfs to the skyhooks, basically they've killed the low sec metnox drill setup system. Because the gas, the reason why it was so valuable was that in order to power the low sec, because you actually were allowed to anchor passive mining in low sec. Right, yep. The problem was now because they've locked out the whole system via the skyhook change. The gas price issues and issues for gas for the low sec players is going to be very, very difficult now. Right, the low sec players aren't going to be able to get access to the gas because we can't steal it from the the zero point yes. zero people anymore. So it's it, it'll be a price hike for the low sec people and a massive massive price de spike for zero point mm -hmm. zero. Yeah, and that's the but the other thing is also interesting too. Here's one of the weird things that's also kind of ties into my mining mentality for my stuff. Um. Depending on which planet is targeted, the moon drills actually would also cause some interesting issues for high sec because if the low sec ones are operating and you're targeting very specific uh, moons and you've anchored them, it will basically be able to generate certain minerals like mexalon and pyrite, which during scarcity was almost impossible to get in large bulk amounts unless you were a corp and you were running your own mining station and doing these particular moons so it's a very interesting thought process here where it may have like with with the, with the drills being active it wasn't just only materials for t2 production and for higher tier ship production but you also had the fact that now pyrite and mexalon which are kind of a little quirky to find anyways are now much more turned on which they would have allowed for much better industrial so there's actually kind of a weird it will actually end up causing some weird back problems later on with production of ships hmm interesting it's 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 a it's, it's a level that's a little bit over my head for for understanding of of industry and how this all works but i'll i'll uh i'll definitely take your word for it uh because that's uh it makes sense it's 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 i mean i like the idea of the sky hook it does have a little bit different the concept also of saw having to be actively worked on is pretty interesting and i suppose that a lot of people actually preferred the sky hook mechanics over the ess right and yeah. there, so there was actually there's actually an interesting debate now going on it's like hey you need to probably change ESS now to some sort of system where people can actually actively mess with it or interact with it more than the current system. My only problem though is that the, the Skyhook system as they have it set up is that the they kind of made, like if you look at the Evencom haulers, they're only, the only ones that really can interact, whereas the other ones are more it says like you it says like when you deal with an income hauler it says oh these can interact with xyz but then none of the other ships have that or unless they get some sort of penalty for uh locking into the skyhook itself which is an interesting note that i've been kind of wondering about because it kind of feels like you, you one of the problems i have is it's called structured content where it's only this item can be worked and what's interesting though is that if anyone goes uh alpha meaning you come off of your omega class you lose access to all of the sky hooks uh sky hook capable ships which then can kind of kneecap the game in a way as well well i mean the the, the, the 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 restriction is cruiser and up and then some mm -hmm. special industrialists right um but yes. to get to get somebody to to pop a can you don't need um anything but a cruiser mm -hmm. or up uh, you don't need that the special industrial ship um, is great for hauling that ship once you pop the can but I don't think that uh, the restriction that they have on what can start initiate a theft I don't I don't think that's been mm -hmm. a problem at all yeah well because like uh, I've got the squall right here. Um, it says, can link to orbital skyhook reagent silos by bypassing the normal ship class restrictions. 
Right. So because normally you, if you were in like a Iteron 5 or mm -hmm. if you were in a cloak hauler, DST. I believe you can, a yeah. DST, you can't initiate theft. But mm -hmm. this one is special. This one can mm -hmm. initiate theft. That's what that's saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you had to use the other one, like I was hearing the story about they were using cheap ships, and that was a big complaint as well, as cheap ships were activating the hand dump, and then, then the ship would land on the grid to pick it up and run. Right, I could bring a DST, and that's what I would do all my hauling in, um, but probably not a DST, the cloak caller was the first one, but the, uh, the, 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 the deluge is way better to use anyways, and that can do what you're right. talking about, but the, the idea of what what you're kind of talking about, it sounds like, is you would write, like to restrict and make it so that if you're going to steal from a, a Skyhook, that you shouldn't be able to use an empty cruiser. Which is what some people were well, using. Yeah, but I wouldn't really do that. But I would be very cautious telling people about it because the if we make it where it's so hard and it has to be adjusted to Omega, then Alphas can't really join in on the fun. You know, yeah, but having one me. person be Omega is not a huge ask. Because the one thing is, is yeah, that true, you can't true, have true. multiple people steal. You can only have one person steal. And, and um, yeah, I, th I think there's a there's discussion to be had there. But I, I think that that wasn't... The biggest problem with this was either mm -hmm. that we were able to just... I Because what I did, uh, my way of doing this was I took an E&I... Worth mm -hmm. 90 million isk, you know, and I used that to go to steel. And then I had a 200 million, you know, plus isk deluge that was sitting cloaked 2,000 kilometers off of the, the, the sky hook. As soon as the can mm -hmm. popped, I would warp down, I would grab it, I would come back, and then I would pop, uh, or then I would cloak both ships. Yes, my E and I had a cloak on it. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, I would, you have to kill the, the rats or whatever, um, you know, in the meantime, but then I would cloak up, wait 15 minutes and filament to somewhere else. And I would filament and filament and filament and filament and filament and filament every 15 minutes and hit up one spot every 15 minutes. That was OP. And I was, I was making off with so much money and there was really, it was so hard to respond to me because, you know, you had basically maybe eight minutes uh, maybe five minutes, you know, to really get to me and stop me from what I'm doing. And if I mm -hmm. if I got that can to pop, I'd warp it down, collect it, and then I was gone. You know, was, I, would, yeah. I avoided all of your gate camping. I avoided everything. I just fillied all over the place. I would hit up, you know, <laughs> 10, 15 places, and some would give mm -hmm. me 17 million. Some would be 125 million, and some would be 2.5 billion isk that I was able yep. to pull out of this. I admit that I was I was way too um, favored in this. But you went from, like, <laughs> I'm super favored to, like, the defender is ungodly favored. And I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. super upset about that. What I am super Intrigue. upset about is, is that you didn't explain why. Why yeah. did you give me all the advantage, get me all hyped up, get me ready to just this was going to be the life of frozen follow gta was on the menu my boys and because i mean <laughs> sky or uh ess is kind of cool not the coolest get bank robbery uh skyhooks was you mean gts you mean gts grand GT theft spaceship G grand theft uh uh items <laughs> you know gas um <laughs> you know like yeah i i the, you you tempted me so much, and then and then you went completely one hundred and eighty degrees in the opposite direction, and mm -hmm. said, you know, we're gonna jump all the way to the 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 defender has all of the advantage, and I wouldn't be so upset about that if you would have explained yourself, CC plea, but you mm -hmm. didn't. You just did this. You flipped a switch, and you were like, "Fuck you," and that's it. That's that's how I feel. That was the statement that I got. And there's, to me, that's, I mean, as long as they maybe did, like, some small changes, I don't think a lot of people have been too mad. I oh, mean, yeah, I mean, even a little bit of a timer, you know, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. if some people need to sleep, you know, they're, you know, once a day you get six hours that you don't have to defend it. 50% um, yeah. of the, the shit goes to a safe thing, so you always are guaranteed to get something. 
Both of but those two would be, have been reasonable. Be, Even both of those two combined so would be a little food. bit. But yeah. what they did was fucked up. It needs up. to be also a limited can. It needs to be a limited can so people don't just sit on it. Right, yeah. Go make them go, go, go get it, you know. Put their ship in space. Mm -hmm. Clean your stuff. Clean your room. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> clean up, pick it up, go do something with it. We need you to, you know... Mm -hmm. And I think that wouldn't, I mean, like, the small change is a lot of people, and also it was really kind of sad because, like, you saw all the people who hyped Equinox up, and now they've become some of the most severe critics of a lot of these changes. Well, especially you know? since they've rolled back all of the, like, I feel like the masses were introduced to this idea that, oh, Ansible's were going to be, we were going to be nerfed into the ground. 0, 0.0 is really upset about it, but it, it gave us all hope that we might be able to someday stake a claim in 0, 0.0. Um, that mm -hmm. we were going to be able to fund this attempted stake at 0, 0.0 through the, the the stealing of all of these fucking uh, skyhooks that we had access to. Um, and for a brief mm -hmm. time, you know, it, it looked like the, the common layman, uh, we, we, the commoner, the, the low, the, the, the lowmen of this land uh, were going to rise up and overthrow the 0.0001% that control this this galaxy. And, mm -hmm. and in like seconds, you know, God came down and was like, no, we are protecting the 0.0001%. 0, 0, 0. <laughs> they, the, they are the hidden treasure trove of all God's things. We will protect them, and we will banish you from 0, 0.0. You shall not come back yeah. here. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm being well, dramatic for, for, yeah. for showmanship, but... Yeah. I understand that, because that's one... It was actually one of the things I was wondering, too, when they first did the patch, and that's why I, I was like... When people were saying, are you excited about this thing? And I said, I am going to be very calm. <laughs> I am not going to get hyped. Because it's like I kind of had a feeling there would be something go sideways. And it actually happened within 24 hours of the first live of Equinox. They basically took a ship. I was actually planning to kind of test out to see what I could do. Uh, you do know that the original Squall and Deluge and all these other ships in the Torrent, you could fit, like... Yeah, cruise missiles you could do some crazy shit with them. Yeah. And then the funny thing was is that the nerf, the nerf that rolled in that really kind of annoyed me was that the argument was, well, they're going to put all these tanking pieces on them. And I'm looking at them like... Um, where did you do this test? Because immediately I kind of realized something wasn't right. And I was like, I hope you guys didn't go into this one particular wormhole at the craziest fit and then come back to CCP screaming about something and claiming it was a problem in, in normal space. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that was not, I was like, that's not cool. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even get a chance to do it because everybody hadn't even built the ships yet. And they just completely flattened the game. But I mean, you can actually make the Edencom haulers go between 250k EHP to 450k EHP depending on fitting still in the game and people are, people don't even talk about it and I'm like you can still do that you just have to know what you're doing and it's not that hard <laughs> right yep yeah, yeah I, oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean this because all that deep in <laughs> no absolutely uh, but yeah this it, it is interesting how um you know the the reaction you have to be careful about catering there is the whole thing like i am very strong on the idea of don't piss off your your mm -hmm. your people you know don't piss them off don't kick them in the fucking balls and expect expect them to go yes master please have give me another um not everybody's a masochist some people are maybe they like kicking kicked in the balls let them do that on their side time um, but for the masses, uh, we, 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 we don't, but I also don't want you to coddle their balls. Okay. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't be, clutch, clutch the pearl. yeah, clutch don't, their pearls. don't, well, just don't be so you, you have to also be careful of being like, Oh, I'll do whatever the player base wants me to do. Um, and it has, and it has to be a balance and it ha I mean, the biggest thing is, is don't piss them off. More than anything that you can possibly do. And be careful about things that maybe they think won't piss them off. That eventually they'll go, oh my god, that was, we, we didn't know 
that this would happen. And especially if you knew what was going to happen if they if we implemented that feature, you need to be very careful about that. Um, I think that some and one of the things that I, I dislike about CCP is that they I feel like they've lost vision of some of their stuff because it's gone so array. It's it's not they had a vision for low sec, they had a vision for 0.0, .0 and they had a vision for high sec. And players took that and and I'm a forever GM. And when I build a game world, my first thing that I, I am uh, understanding of is that as soon as I put my players in this world, it's going to fuck everything up. And that's with four yep. people. You know, put thousands, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people, millions possibly of people who have at least interacted with this game, uh, and they will fuck your fucking shit up like and and the thing is though is that i feel like they they haven't been responsive enough to go that oh you know what low sec it needs to be this now like mm -hmm. based upon what i've seen with how the players are interacting with low sec low sec, sec should be this pot should be this or whole space should be this let's reevaluate our philosophical understanding of what we want these things to be and they're holding true to old edicts that have been handed down from them from the bible of eve online that tells them that this is what low sec is and this was what high sec is and this is what wormhole space is without ta that never took into account what has happened in the last 10 years yeah well, and there's also the problem also is like, like, I'll give you a good example. Um, I was actually talking about another stream about this. Is that, like, um, near me is Molten Heath. I actually like Molten Heath. Molten Heath has interesting lore, where supposedly there's a three-way battle between Angel Cartel, Mimitar Republic, and one other rogue element. And when they had Scarcom taken... And then they took it out. We actually lost uh, Mimitar space, lost some of its connections to Nullsec. So it's really hard to actually for Mimitar players to get out into Nullsec on a regular basis. But at the same time, it's like, oh, you have a low hanging fruit for, you know, pirate versus empire faction warfare right here. You're like, this, this region almost, there's not a lot of activity in it. It's like, hey, let's put the pirate faction warfare right here. And I was actually under the impression they were going to do that because they were putting security like uh, fortresses on the edge of, of low sec to null sec in various areas of the game. Right. Yep. I remember and, that. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this would be perfect. This would be like a perfect place for this kind of stuff to happen. Instead, everything dropped inside faction warfare, low sec, which sometimes is like for Mimitar, it's like literally in the center of the map. Mm -hmm. Whereas, whereas, this area of Holden Heath uh, doesn't get a lot of activity, doesn't really have a lot of stuff going on, and really could use a, a rejuvenation by putting new content out there. You know, basically the pirates and, you know, the Mimitar Republic are fighting back and forth, so we'd have a form of faction warfare between pirates who will have their hidey holes over in Curse region. And then you'd have... Uh, People who would actually probably come also from the Mimitar Republic uh, faction warfare section would come out there. But to me, the optimum would be, hey, let's take the uh, insurgency system. Instead of it just being stuck in faction warfare as it is now, hey, let's apply it where they jump all around the low sec regions in the game. So it randomly drops and then they can spread the insurgency in areas that people wouldn't expect, kind of scrambling the game up a little bit. And then they pack it up and leave after they've robbed everything and done everything they wanted to do. You know, that's what I thought it'd be. But instead, they stuck with the Zarzak and Faction Warfare-centric concept, particularly Mimitar Space. And it was kind of a little bit frustrating, but I was like, okay, they can do that the way they, they did. I was actually hoping that we would have a, a Zarzak gate in Molden Heath, because that area doesn't have a lot of activity. I was like, that'd be a perfect way to get people to come out here and do stuff. You know, yeah, no, well, absolutely. You know. it's, it's interesting ideas, uh, and unfortunately, CCP went in a very different direction. I, I do have to say that it's one of the things that kind of pisses me off when people, like, when I bring up the idea of we need to revitalize low sec, and they're like, but faction warfare, I'm like, fuck you. Yeah, I yes, <laughs> I am a Galente, and I'm going to tell you, fuck you, because uh, <laughs> faction warfare is not low sec. Faction warfare is faction warfare. Low sec is low sec.
Mm -hmm. uh, Losec Lo yeah. will intersect with faction warfare to a certain degree, but it's a very different mindscape and landscape. And Losec in yeah. general has been left to the wayside to be to 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 die in a in a in a corner quietly. Um, and I say, do not die quietly. <laughs> like we, we're gonna yeah, scream yeah. until until you until you understand that this needs to be revived because we do have a revive spell. So let's let's use that on low sec, and get it revitalized. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool. What do you think would be probably the best? I I think new resources and the materials need to concentrate in low sec so that people, you know, just as much as like when they put the sky hooks and everybody start robbing null sec to try to get those materials, maybe they should put something else that's very vital in low sec, but then people have to collect and operate, so then it begins to drive more content. They could be coming stolen. out there to get it. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm down with that. I like that. Um, my mono my and I I think that yeah, putting a sky hook. Yeah, ask if you're going to keep the new sky, the new skyhook system and that's your defenders get 99.9% .9 of the advantage okay then give us skyhooks in low sec because I'll steal from mm. snuff every day mm. <laughs> and it will be fun what if, what if, what it about would be great. what about one um, yeah. well, go what ahead. about one interesting thought process because do you know that the majority of the Pocos in this game are owned like by a very few like handful of players? Mm -hmm. Like these these Pocos are like in the middle of nowhere. They're like everywhere. And basically if you interact with them even in high sec, you're paying somebody who barely does anything with them. And I was actually wondering in my head, like, well, my thought process was nationalize all the Pocos in high sec. Basically whatever empire they're part of, they are you know, that empire's poco and then you have to pay the empire tax so you want to go down a low sec but when you do the low sec one you have to fuel it you have to put like a fuel block mm. it's not gonna be a lot but you'll have to put something in there so then somebody can screw around with either like and that's one of the other things too is like we don't have a lot of mechanics in this game where hey somebody's just camping on stuff or they're just building all these you know they've just got all these pocos or stations there's no way to kind of go in and say, oh, look, you got a fuel bay. I'm taking your fuel. I'm going to screw around with your station. I'm going to screw around with this thing that you've set up so that now you have to defend it or at least keep an eye on it while you're doing stuff. You know, but there's not a lot of mechanics for that. And even I had ideas like, OK, if you do enough ganking and your security status goes down to like, let's say, negative five or so, you get punted out into low sec, your, your respawn, your medical drone, your medical clone drops you into low sec but if you keep going down lower it drops you into the pirate npc space so like you have hmm. people you know you can actually keep moving and doing stuff you know and yeah I, I, I like those well, ideas um one of the big things that i would say that i would i'm advocating for for low sec is that i think um and I, I think that those those are some of opportunities to have some bigger scale kind of interesting and even small super small scale kind of stuff that's uh, revolved around mm -hmm. player structures and player uh, straight up player interactions. Um, but I do think that there mm -hmm. needs to be more PVE in low sec. Uh, not just in, I think faction warfare space should have more like, not just active uh, faction warfare space uh, activities. It should have a bunch of other activities as well. More um, sites for you to hack. More sites for you to do archaeology because it's you know enriched by the the keldari or whatever you throw lp in it and you're guaranteed you know uh more to have a spite site spawn every 30 you know uh minutes or whatever that'll be a uh a hacking site or whatever for that that area there's you know lots of opportunities for you to um you know expand upon you know it, it allowing us to enhance our space but I, my big thing is is driving that we should have content that's cruiser and below. Let's get people in mm -hmm. cruisers and below that's not very crazy PvE content, similar to the the faction warfare. It doesn't need to be the 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 PvE content doesn't need to be engaging. Doing it and fearing for your life needs to be what it needs to be what's engaging. Um, and mm -hmm. if you triple or quadruple the amount of uh, people in low sec. Um, things get way more terrifying way more terrifying yeah. than than high sec or 0.0 .0. i'd say uh 
Highsec is always going to be the most terrifying for me that I'm a pirate. Um, but <laughs> 0, 0.0 is super, super safe. Highsec is safe ish, quote Itch. unquote, uh, yeah, maybe not really, not at all, the super scary, dangerous, whatever. Uh, but low sec is one of these areas that the potential for danger is skyrocketingly high. Um, but there's just mm -hmm. not enough people in those areas. Um, and sometimes consolidating that area, like trying to get them consolidated, which is what Frontlines did um, with, with Faction Warfare, is kind of put them into a bunch of low sec people into one area to, to shoot each other. But the thing is, is that as a, as a Faction Warfare person, I have the ability to make some money in these areas. A pirate doesn't give a shit. <laughs> like there's mm -hmm. nothing for them to do here but shoot us give them a little bit more you know and it doesn't i don't want it to be something that snuff gets to come in and dominate the content let it be something that's mm -hmm. cruiser below you can't drop a sino it's dead space type kind of stuff you know actually since you're up in caldari space or around that region caldari galente space have you ever noticed that they always have the garista forward bases always running around um, I noticed them a little bit, but to be honest, that's actually very little on my radar. Yeah. Well, here's the reason why I mentioned that. What if you got standings with the Garistas to a certain point, and you could actually dock with those FOBs? Hmm. That'd be interesting. That could allow you... Yeah. Because I've seen them a lot, and I'm like, you know what, that... they actually are technically considered a station. I was like, you know, that would actually be kind of cool if a player could get a certain standing positive with pirates and could bounce between these different FOBs all around the game, meaning that would be a little bit interesting for them to operate in high sec or high security spaces, even with bad standings. But then also, like, you could probably interlock it with insurgency stuff, etc. There's also the, the thought process I've had was uh, called, because, uh, like, um, you get a couple missions in high sec that have smuggler gates. And I've always thought it'd be kind of cool if you had uh, a spe like some of the combat anoms actually have gates on them and smuggler gates. Well, mm -hmm. if someone doesn't rat them, if you're a pirate player, you can go through those gates and jump to another location with an alternate network. But then if a player comes along and kills that anom, you can't jump through that area. Hmm. Interesting. I like I that. Give you um, also, uh, Karen Lich kind of points out one of the things that Snuff can do cruisers. Yes, they can, but, uh, I've been doing faction warfare for a very long time now, and, uh, 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't care about Snuff when it comes to any of the real content of faction warfare. Maybe getting to a spot or gate camping, mm -hmm. um, is, is, I'm worried about Snuff, um, uh, but, uh, they don't want if they can't get their marshal in there with a backup that can drop right on top of them because they got booshed 150 you know 100 kilometers off and then booshed again 200 kilometers in a dead space they, they can't warp to the person they can't drop a cyano there's nothing that they can do uh they are terrified they they are scared mm -hmm. little kittens and they will always be scared little kittens in those situations um and we need to continue that tradition i i I've never seen them be super aggressive. Maybe every once in a while they'll come out and play, but they're just coming out and playing then. They're not, you know, like, it, it, they're, they're not scary anymore when they can't drop faxes all over the place because the thing is you can suicide 30 people into one 12, 14 billion-isk ship of theirs that they like to play with, mm -hmm. and then they immediately are like, I don't want to play this game anymore. I like to play with my 14 billion-isk ship. But and I'm being a little yeah. bit of a bitch. I am being a little bit of a bitch here, so because I say fuck stuff. But actually... <laughs> well, they actually had like when they did the changes to the battlefields. When battlefields originally first came out uh, with Havoc, they only had one warp in, one beacon, and now they have three. They have one for the op four, one for the positive, you know, blue four, red four, but then the middle one is supposedly for any neutral that jumps in. And we had to do that because people were just like you'd jump in to do the battlefield and you'd have to kind of slow boat your way over to the interactives and people were just mauling the content users because they would just they would come right behind them and just murder them. 
and it's just it was kind of a very strange interaction with that content at the time but now I think it's a little bit better but yeah it's I think there should be some smaller stuff um, and some smaller materials to be worked with or like a the home front situation I think they actually should turn it to more like solo so it's only one one player can do it and then plus one so if you want to if you want to get in you're going to trigger your yellow mode but then once you've done that faction that little project you then get you have a potential to get an escalation that has to be done as a fleet mm -hmm. and maybe they could do something like that in maybe they could do a version of Homefront, but for low sec content only that'd be kind of cool I mean, one of the big things that I'm advocating mm -hmm. for at this point is that we need to have a lot of content to ensure that everybody has access to it, not just people who are in mm -hmm. faction warfare. Um, and I, you know, I think that maybe the best idea is to start with a test bed in faction warfare area space to get people more conjugated there for a little bit. Uh, but in general, uh, I think faction or low sec is uh, prime and ready for uh, a true uh, mm -hmm. expansion and a, a true prosperous. Uh, put it put it on the map where it needs to be one of the most dangerous spaces in all of Eve Online. Because everybody could be increased... there. <laughs> yeah. What if you think if we actually push also security status to ten? Because I think if we give people security status ten, they become more aggressive. It's like you're a pirate. If you're below negative five to ten, okay, whoop de doo, you've got some something. We haven't yet worked out systems to actually benefit a pirate for being below a certain security status uh, right now it's plus five for high sectors but i've run into older players who actually had older standings so i've actually um, seen there, is some, players like there are some things where you i think even present day that you can go out to and kill officer spawns and stuff like that that'll get you over 5.0 um what that means exactly there's the uh the marshal that has that that uh bonus to security status which is kind of cool i i really like the at ships that are coming out that are going to be negative 10 um matters for the, the but it sucks that they're just at ships because they're you know only yeah. 0. 0.0000000000 000 000 000 000 000. hold on i'm again i'm gonna be a little bit zero zero anyway <laughs> yeah. you get the idea it's it, it's a, a, it? only a very small percentage of people are actually going to ever actually fly that ship even if they have it in their hangar, it's very unlikely. And even if they undock, I'm not going to say you flew the ship unless you actually put it in mm -hmm. danger. Yeah. Oh, because I do know, I do know, I've actually seen snuffed out pilots actually using AT ships in faction warfare and using them just to mess with people. And like, it would, you would, would like, you'd be like, oh yeah, just drop it. And suddenly the next thing, you would just get smashed by something that was just completely out of your league. It's always kind of funny to see but yeah you are correct it's like i think i think it is high time for this but i also think you know increasing the security status would actually be useful for a lot of players because now it means that people will attack you know other gankers or they might you know grind their way up and then run through low sec shooting anything you know, and then they might try to get away yeah if it had you know, a, a proper a, a bonus for it that's good there's some interesting things that small things that you can do to kind of make that attractive um, but we are getting to our time here, so I want to make sure that I have enough time oh, I'm here sorry, to, to... to, no, not, not a problem at all. We've, we've had, uh, I just looked at the time. I'm like, oh, wow, we've actually been talking a good solid amount. Um, and I want to make sure that I have time here for you to kind of get in a few things. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure that you have time for is any shout outs that you want to give anybody that's helped you along the way, that's, that's mentored you, that's helped you. Um, you know, anybody that, you know, your best friends that are that are playing EVE with you type kind of thing. Any other CSM members that have, that have inspired you, other people that have inspired you in EVE. Um, you know, any shout outs that you want to give in EVE in general. Well, I'll give, um, I'll give one interesting one. Well, besides Brisk Rabal, who I think actually is kind of a good guy to start a little bit of, you know, kind of getting a running around in the game. Um, the Kavora Brothers. Uh, Joshua and Andrew Kovora, because they were the guys who actually officially actually were the first ones to kill me in low sec. <laughs> I popped into one of the old the old Triglavian uh, ice sites. Rakavine used to be an ice material, 
And so you could actually mine it with Isaac. And I went out there one day. Oh, I want to go get that. And he found me and blew me to smithereens. I was like, what? Um, also for Rex Umbra. Uh, Rex Umbra is the guy who actually nuked me really, really bad when I had a... It was like an over 9 billion Peria. Oh, wow. I literally had... I, yeah, I had bought a whole bunch of... Because like, there were people that were doing fire sales during COVID. And so there were a couple of players. Like, I got this one guy, and I got his uh, fire sale for a whole bunch. I got nervous, and I dropped stuff in there. But he gave me a very important lesson. I know Carrion. I know you may not like him, but <laughs> I'm kind of grateful that he's the one who shot me because it taught me a very important lesson you know, not to carry all my stuff in one ship. I had to... Yeah, I had you gotta luckily, be careful. 90... Yeah, luckily 90% of it dropped, and I had to ransom it. And that's back oh, wow. when, when Plex was like, Plex was almost like 2 million per Plex. That was a lot of money. Wow. But, uh, yeah, but I got, a, I got most of that back, and uh, there's one guy down in Molden Heath, uh, Brooklyn. Uh, his name, you'll see him in Reddit, his name's Alden, uh, and he actually... He's been a very good friend of mine out there when I'm in Molden. Like, he would give me information about what was going on in Molden Heath while I'm running around. Because I like going out there to do exploration every once in a while or poke over trying to find some resources. Uh, I like to intruder mine. So I basically use small ships to do stuff like that. And uh, most of the people who've really helped me out and actually done quite a bit. But uh, I think a lot of people in EVE have been very helpful. Uh, sadly, a lot of people that I knew back when I was in 2020 no longer play the game. Or the corporations involved, like we are made of stars, Whamos, no longer exists. Yeah, uh, and, uh, time passes fast in real life. Eve is ten times the speed of real life. You know, it's if you. I feel like uh, I've I've known my co-host Samson for about three years. It feels like thirty. <laughs> like you know, just. Best... There's one player, though, I will do a shout-out. I don't know if he's ever still in the game now, but his name is Professor Moriarty. Oh, it's a good name. Yeah, so he actually taught me... Actually, he, besides Brisk, doing the silly fits, he actually was one of the ones who taught me a lot about all the different stat variations. And so, like, he has a ship he calls the Blink. It's basically a pacifier that's been souped up so crazy, like the warp speed on it. He literally calls it jokingly transwarp. Because it literally, you'll warp so fast between two points, it's barely like two seconds across some systems. Wow. That's impressive. He, mm -hmm. So I kind of learned a lot of stuff from him as well. and it was, There's a lot of tweaking you can do in this game. This game is definitely a... There, so, so a lot of people are like, oh, it's spreadsheets in space because it kind of looks like spreadsheets in space. And I'm like, no, you don't get it. No. It's spreadsheets in space because if you go to the spreadsheet, it will tell you all. If you can, if yeah. you can just compile the information properly, you will know yeah. the heart of EVE Online and you will be able to break yeah. that heart. Yeah. Well, the problem, but that's also one of the reasons why I'm like, I really don't use spreadsheets, nor do I use... Uh, concepts of you know like Pypha and stuff is because to me it's like I like to learn I like to figure it out I want to see how these things work because if you if you optimize the fun out of the game it won't be fun for you anymore absolutely absolutely and thank you girl gamer uh, gamer girl because I'm dyslexic and my brain doesn't work properly Girl game, uh, gamer girls, thank you so much for the the follow or the fifty three person raid. That's super awesome. We're here with Drake. Or, or, sorry, we're here with uh, Mental right now. <laughs> God damn it! And that's the imposter syndrome. Is God coming. is yeah. You know it got stuck in my brain. Um, <laughs> and we're here with Mental right now talking about uh, his CSM run. Um, it's uh, we're getting towards the end right now. We were just getting done with kind of talking about the uh, shout outs that he was kind of giving. Um, and to be honest, I have to say your shout outs is solid, dude. Like you give real shout outs there's a lot of people who come on here and just like you know yeah i like people sometimes you know <laughs> like and it's hard sometimes to like you know be you're put on the spot to a certain degree for sure um but well, yeah I have, I have i have people who i do really care about who've actually been very helpful in this game 
but I also try to be as respectful as possible, you know, and sometimes there's some people I can't even mention, you know, in this because either they're very controversial or the person, they might have helped me out in a personal way. There's a one particular former CEO, I think he was part of the alliance, but with Goon Swarm, I believe he's passed away, but years ago, yep, um, I wandered into an area during one of the Winter Nexuses with a ship, and his crew wanted to go after me, and the guy saw that I was a fairly new player, he's like, hey, you know, he messaged me, he says, hey, who are you? Like, I was like, oh, I'm just a new person, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to have fun, and he actually said, you know what, don't join a corporation, you'll have more adventures this way. In actuality, Ooh. he was actually fairly correct because it's allowed me to do a lot more that way. I mean, it's, it's, occasionally I'll join a group, and usually it's just for uh, the experience. for a little bit of time. Yeah, and then kind of you know putter along. Uh, it, team, it seems like I'm the black cat effect because a couple of people have, you know, one group in particular kept trying to kick me, <laughs> and then they end up losing all their AT ships because of that. It wasn't because of me. I was like somebody. Somebody decided to scam them, and I just thought it was funny because, like, um, I didn't do anything, but I'm gonna have to get out the door. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we we have a nice solid raid here. Um, we're gonna be kind of wrapping things up here, but I want to make sure that you have uh, a time to kind of put a spotlight on your uh, what what are you know the most things that you are super passionate about, Eve? If you especially with the the super influx of people here here who haven't gotten to hear all of the things that you've already been passionate about, um, if you could you know distill. The, the the greatness of mental the arc trooper tell us who you know what what, what do you care about who well are you? i know that what do you want my basic my basic stick is my basic stick is usually the fitting but i do enjoy the minutia of all the different stats and materials and so i really like to see more of a general balance pass on things much more careful thinking consideration but I do really want to make sure that the backbone of Eve is strong. So the hauling and also the exploration and mining should be rock solid because then you can put all kinds of crazy stuff for the PvP side and they can go at it. And that's what I'm really going to say. And yes, I hear you guys with your cat ears. <laughs> you... The Mimitar ones? ones, you have to go get your tetanus shot because they don't exactly integrate very well with the head. I know that. <laughs> you already have. You already have a ship that already actually has cat ears built in. Have you ever looked at the slicer carefully? It does have cat ears. You can actually put down the colors on it and actually make it look like it's got the glowing lights now because the lights go in there. So you can make it look like you have a set it up right. You can actually make it look like you've got streamer ears. Yes, we'll be fine with that. I don't mind if the cat ears are put on the ships. I don't mind that. Are, are you... Long you don't mind it, but are you an advocate for it? Will you come to the CSM and tell I'll, CCP to their face that they need cat ears? You know how I'm going to do it? I'm going to make it into a Galente anime archaeology event. <laughs> I love it. Basically, the Galente will dig up some database. It'll be full of this stuff, and then we'll have it in the game. That's Perfect. how we'll do it. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, one th last thing before we wrap things up. Is there any projects that you're working on? Any websites that you've built? Any YouTube channels? Twitch channels? Are you on the X or Twitter or whatever the fuck you want to call the social medias of the goddamn world? Where, where, where can we find more of you well you might see me more in reddit than anything else um i will try to use more of the different contact you know materials but i'm kind of joking i'll say this i am an electronic luddite <laughs> <laughs> ironically but if you ever need to you can find me on the eve discord uh yeah you and mr savage xl is correct he says he's everywhere yes my spy network is everywhere comrades <laughs> i will help you up anything just save the word. The, I mean, he's got a camera installed in my bedroom, from my understanding. You know, that was that was our well, understanding. Yes, so, <laughs> well, well, the other yeah, the other thing is, well, you, are you sure that uh, Enterprise behind you is not rigged? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but you know, it's like you know, well, my my cat spy network will be active. And you don't even know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. 
yeah, we have a we have a lot of fun with that. And you, so if you ever look for me, just basically at me in various channels, and I'll pop up. Or uh, you make the summoning ritual. You say, "Hey, Malint, can you make a fit for an interceptor Varger or something?" <laughs> and you might just end up with it, you know, popping up out of thin air. Magic. Yes. They actually, uh, they actually did do that. Um, actually, I'll put it in here. Uh, messages because I think you'll like this uh, somebody was joking about it and they were I said I think an interceptor Varger would be very very bad form and then people said well you're the one who does all this kind of strange I was like ah crap now I gotta do this <laughs> so right here so here's the fit I mean, I could probably optimize it a little bit more. So in your your DMs, there's the there's the weirdo fit there. I'll go take a look at that for sure. Um, but yeah, five, five AUs a second. Ooh, <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Uh, but yeah, this uh, is the the, the... <laughs> bad. <laughs> I'd have to have a pistol then. But yeah, this has been really awesome. Uh, thank you so much for coming on here and. Um, you know, it's it, before we wrap up. Is there any last minute things that you uh, you want to talk about before we uh, wrap up? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you ever want to, I just say put me on your vote. You know, if you want somebody who's not null block and who probably be more interested in making sure all the small groups as well as uh, all the different materials get at least some attention. I don't mind that. I mean, I think you guys should just vote for who you think would be the best CSM for you guys. And uh, I'm actually very grateful that you guys invited me on for this and allowed me to uh, talk with you guys and uh, give me a platform to talk for a little bit. And yes, Absolutely. Mr. Savage, you know, we have the six and Sylvarger for you. But, you know, <laughs> we've had a built. I need to get you the dual dual fit again for you. The dual dual fit. The dual dual. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on. This has uh, been an honor uh, to, to talk to the, the infamous uh, Mental. And, uh, you know, this is uh, you. You are you. You are well known throughout EVE Online. Um, you've you've built up your name very quickly. EVE Vegas. Yes, we're I'm, I'm going to be in EVE Vegas. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you all for listening, for watching, for those who uh, those who are watching and uh have a great night uh, we will be back uh we have more possible interviews that are going to be happening i'm going to get more drunk until like i'm going to call into work and be like well i'm coming into work but I'm not really here <laughs> so we'll be right back though have a good rest of the evening <laughs>